on its way to the Arctic, the icebreaker North Pole runs into high seas. the deck is quite an adventure. And the meal hours are tantalizing. The only person on board the North Pole who enjoys the sight of the stormy sea is artist Igor Ruban, although this is his first sea voyage. The seas still run high, but bright streaks on the horizon promise improved weather. The icebreaker steadily holds its course due north. The scientific instruments have all been examined and tested, and now the expedition sets to work on the assignments of the central administration of the Great Northern Sea Route. This Arctic seaway, 3,600 miles long, runs through the Barents, the Kara, the Laptev, the East Siberian, the Chukotsk, and the Bering Seas. In other words, it runs along the northern shores of European Russia and all of Asia. First opened before the war, the northern sea route links the easternmost and westernmost extremities of the Soviet Union, stretching across two continents. Numerous polar stations have been founded as outposts along the northern sea route. One after another, Arctic ports were open to shipping. Whole regions of the far north, hitherto blank spaces on the map, have been developed to become part of Soviet national economy. In various far-flung corners of the Soviet Arctic, scientific research is underway, aiming to transform this sea route into a normally operated shipping lane by 1950. The scientific work on the icebreaker North Pole is part of this carefully planned and thoroughly prepared research. The first ice flows. The farther north the vessel penetrates, the more solid and heavy the ice. The aerostat, specially constructed for this expedition, is designed to investigate the upper strata of the atmosphere. This is the first time an aerostat has been utilized in these regions for scientific research. Upon reaching the ice fields, the expedition starts its main task, exploring the bed of the eastern sector of the Arctic Ocean. The sector is noted for its unusually complex ice conditions. For the scientists on board the vessel, these seemingly ordinary stretches of ice have a special fascination, for they contain the key to many a vital problem that has to be solved before the conquest of the far north is complete. The icebreaker's skill is being checked. A diver goes down to see how the plates have withstood their first encounter with ice. From below, the diver reports by telephone that all is in perfect shape. The screw and rudder are in excellent condition. Once again, the captain orders full speed ahead. The ice flows grow denser with every mile, but the powerful engines of the icebreaker press her on, and soon the expedition reaches the area of pack ice. This polar pack, stretching over vast areas in the eastern sector of the Arctic Ocean, presents the major obstacle to normal shipping. Soviet polar explorers hoped by 1950 to unravel the mysteries of ice drifts in this region in order to harness the drifts in service of normal navigation.
the structure of the ice is studied, also its tensile strength and its specific gravity. Geologists investigate the structure and characteristics of the ocean bed. To study currents which condition the course and speed of ice drifts, hydrologists make good use of the Ekman-Mertz reel. The 74th parallel is crossed and the icebreaker radios for air reconnaissance. In response, the nearest polar station dispatches a plane. But fog, the curse of the Arctic, descends in a sudden curtain. The ship's searchlights serve as beacons to keep the pilot off the mast. drops a pennant containing the requested information and also additional assignments for the expedition. The vessel is about to shift its course. For the last time, expedition members go out on this ice field to cache messages in special containers. Drifting with the pack ice, the containers will in time be found hundreds and thousands of miles from the spot. Study of the devious course of their drift leads to valuable information. And once again the expedition moves through the austere landscape of the Arctic. Suddenly, a polar bear is sighted to starboard. The cameraman, always ready for a good shot. The ship's hunters lose no time. Anticipating fresh meat for the ship's menu, the cooks rejoice. But the polar bear has its own ideas on the matter. of walruses soon compensates the expedition. The icebreaker steadily forges ahead and the scientists resume their work. They investigate the power of solar radiation. They study the strange inhabitants of the sea bottom. The assembled data is analyzed and systematized in the ship's laboratory. out icebreakers and the Soviet polar stations report by radio to the All-Union Arctic Institute at Leningrad, staff headquarters for the campaign in the far north. From all over the Soviet north, scientific reports keep flowing in a steady stream to this unique HQ, which prepares ice drift forecasts, expanding man's knowledge of the still mysterious Arctic. This knowledge will, the Russians hope, assist them in realizing in the next few years their dream of creating a normal shipping line via the Great Northern Sea Route.